Hello, it's another edition of Plus Reports, a compilation of the stories and events that made the news recently. Welcome, I'm Jacinta Ubiuku. This week's edition captures more of the reports that focus on spate of insecurity across Nigeria. A group of human rights agitators, including the United Alliance of Social Forces and the People's Alternative Political Movement, have demanded national action against insecurity and poverty in Nigeria. Plus TV Africa correspondent Destiny Momo has won this. <laughs> The group has come together to agitate, make demands, and want their voices heard in the annals of history. So they have spoken unequivocally concerning their demands, which include the rights to live in dignity, comfort, free from fear, and ability to work in their own interest. What are we demanding? They condemn the inactions they have attributed to historical incompetence and negligence of the ruling class. We want to take advantage of this rally to condemn the killing, brutal killing of Mr. Gulak yesterday in a way. And we are asking for full investigation. This kind of uh, gathering is important, you know, to let them know that, you know, Nigerians understand that they need to be represented better. We are demanding that our children should be protected from being kidnapped. We are demanding that the farmers sh should be protected from being killed on the field of farming. The killings that have gone on in this country are un unrivaled, unparalleled in the history of this country. We have never sunk so low as a nation. The Nigerian people have come to the realization that the future lies in their hands. The protest which started from Ikeja on the bridge in Lagos culminated at the State House of Assembly, Alausa. They are received by the member representing Ojo One constituency, Olushegun Akonde, and the majority leader. We share your pains. It is affecting everybody. It is affecting us. Even, even. We, that we are in government, we are not left out. If you have your hard copy of your petitions, you submit the hard copy of the petitions, the hard copy of the petition will be taken to the clerk, it will be read on the floor of the house, and the house will commit it, the house will commit it to the appropriate committee to look into it. Senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falana, demands that the government releases drones and CCTVs to aid the security situation while asking further for the struggling power sector to be fixed. In the case of Lagos, we want CCTV cameras all over the place. Is that not so? Yes! We want tracking devices acquired. Is that not so? Yes! We want drones acquired. Is that not so? Yes! The only way we can deal with electricity tariffs is for the House of Assembly to please wake up in this respect. Interestingly, the protest is also being staged in other states. Other demands include electricity tariff hike, implementation of child right laws, fixing of the refineries, and a better Nigeria in all ramifications. Destiny Momo for Plus TV Africa. Nigerians are now demanding that the government tackles the root causes of poverty, insecurity, human rights abuses, and socio-economic instability, which, according to them, is linked to good governance. Now, the former APC's chief ten, Ahmed Gulak's uh, murder has caused a stir across the country with reactions from different quarters. Despite the police report indicting the Eastern Security Network, the Imo State Governor Hopu Zodema has come out to debunk the police findings, insisting that it was politically motivated. Osaroge Ogbonwa estrays the controversy surrounding the killing. On the 30th of May, a chieftain of the All Progressive Congress and former aide to past President Goodluck Jonathan, Ahmed Gulak, was shot dead by gunmen in Imo State. His killing came as a shock to many Nigerians. 
Barely 48 hours later, the police in a statement said Mr. Gulak's killers were traced to their location within Imo State on Sunday, where they were shot dead during a gun battle with police operatives. The police report also says that the assailants were members of the Eastern Security Network, or IPOB. So far, with the investigation, even if these persons have been killed, the investigation points to the ESN and IPOB. Sure, it is. Reacting to the news, analysts have raised questions concerning the death of Ahmed Gulak and the quick reaction of the police. Some have mentioned it could be a political assassination. I'm still watching the development as a person uh, because the first reaction we had was that the police had killed uh, the person. Then we also got from the Imo state governor that some arrests had also been made. Because if it was conclusive to say that all the assailants had been killed, then that would have raised questions. Why would you just kill all of them and uh, close the matter? We need, we need to know. Nigerian police has not moved away from the rude and crude way of conducting investigation as is being done in other clients. I expect them to use forensic to conduct this investigation. They use technology, track phone calls, you know, subpoena phones and messages and stuff like that, and not rushing into conclusion. With the emergence of the police report, the IPOB has denied involvement in Gulag killing, saying it has no reason to kill the former aide to Good Luck Jonathan. If you are being accused, you have a right to see your own mind. You have a right of denial or acceptance. So, so, but it is the responsibility of police to actually show incontrovertible evidence to prove that um, IPOB or its uh, other, um, other, other arms is responsible for the killing. He's of no threat to IPOB. So I wouldn't see why IPOB will have a hand in uh, the killing of uh, Ahmed Gulak. I think this idea of trying to rush into judgment and conclusion whenever things happen uh, sometimes mislead us in the direction of our investigation. While further details are being awaited, there have been calls from eminent Nigerians not to ethnicize the killings. While we sympathize with the family and friends of the deceased, there are concerns that his death should not end up as another item in Nigeria's long list of unreserved political assassinations. Still on insecurity, this time it is Kaduna, northwest of Nigeria. The national leadership of Khan has declared a week of prayers for the nation over the current insecurity challenge. Kaduna State in recent times has been on news over insecurity issues ranging from incessant killings, kidnappings, for ransom, banditry and other related crimes. Here is the details of the report as presented from our studio. Christian faithful in Kaduna State have held special prayers for peace and other challenges confronting the nation. They clad in black and tagged the prayers for insecurity and restoration of peace in Kaduna in Nigeria at Equa Church, Kaduna. The state can chairman Reverend Joseph Hayab says the prayers becomes necessary considering the unpleasant happenings in the state and other parts of the country. He argues that Nigeria is at war, even if it's not a physical battle, but a battle with conscience peace and unity of the people. The challenge of insecurity, the instability in our land, the lack of positive progress that we can visibly see, even as we march towards another day that government was sworn in for Christians all over Nigeria to fast and pray, to seek the face of the Lord concerning this country, and to also challenge ourselves on the need to act responsibly as citizens. My call to my people in Nigeria, particularly in Kaduna State, is for us to be more prayerful. We need to seek the face of God. With the situation we have found ourselves, a lot of trials and temptation. We have been pushed to the wall, and every angle is boiling. There's no doubt that uh, we are not in the best of times today. Uh, there's no doubt that we do not have challenges, but there's no challenge that cannot be uh, surmounted by 
understanding, by dialogue, by discussions, mutual discussions, true, 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 true discussions, opening up to ourselves, and uh, by the grace of God, light, when light sets in, darkness will certainly will disappear. The leaders express sadness over huge amount of money paid to secure the Greenfield students. They say government that doesn't take pride in securing her citizens only come out to issue a statement after the people have paid over 150 million naira and bought motorcycles that is less than 500,000 naira. We got news from parents of the Greenfield University because we even prayed for the Greenfield University last Sunday and their parents now call us that day too. This is their day of rejoicing. We celebrate with them. The most important thing is that we thank God they are saved, though they told us the money they paid, the things they did, which shows that we really have a long way to go if our government will be truly a government. According to these religious leaders, enough is enough of the carnage and an end must be devised to all the criminalities. While the fight against insecurity is of course everyone's business. You're watching Plus Report, there is more after this break. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.